Welcome to my channel. This video I decided to dedicate to my best core pictures for this year. You know that now on Instagram it's a very popular thing when people select 9 most voted, most liked pictures and I decided to do similar things. I went to my Instagram, checked all pictures which I did during this year and I selected those which I like the most which are the dearest for me. Sometimes they were difficult to color, sometimes they were quite easy to color and I did them just with one breath. I seated and I finished them quite easily. Some I really struggled with, so they are different, but in my opinion they are my best, probably best top 10. And we will start with the flower ear. First of all, I am extremely grateful that after some abandonment time I returned to this book and maybe in this year I didn't color the whole book, I still have to color tiny pictures remaining here, but at least I did one very frightening design which I knew can't be quite easy for me. When I colored poppies previously I always struggled with them. First of all, I always struggled how to show transparency of the petals that they are very tender and delicate. You know that also they have a lot of folds, they are very thin so they fold easily. And I always struggled how to do proper shading on the red. And finally, when I did this spread, I gathered all my previous experience. I did several not very successful poppies pictures in the books by Maria Trolle, then in this one, but this spread definitely is my best poppies. I decided to divide them into two groups, so I was able to practice both red flowers and purple. Purple, they were easy. But reds here I am really proud of. I managed to do this look of the poppies to get this look because I added a lot of orange and I used much bigger amount of orange comparing to my previous poppies. I really tried to leave lighter areas in the central part of each of the petals and to highlight those edges of the flowers which were slightly curved so to show the shape of the flower and then I tried to shade heavily spaces between petals and central part. So now I do think that my flowers look three-dimensional and I am extremely proud with this achievement that I returned to this book and I managed to do such a complicated spread. For me it's, it was like a milestone that if I did such a complicated spread, then I obviously will be able to finish the whole book. Next pictures are all made with a mixed media technique. Sometimes I used watercolor and pencils, sometimes I used water soluble pencils and regular pencils. And you know, when I analyzed my top 10 of the favorite pictures, I realized that I don't need to return to coloring more with mixed media in such way with combining various coloring media, I, I'm able to get better results comparing to the simple pencil pictures. So that will be my goal and my promise for the next year. Let's start from the Midnight Masquerade by Hanna Carson, obviously, and here I did a portrait. Portrait is a complicated thing for me and portrait in such unusual color palette it's even more challenging. Here I was heavily inspired by the portrait of the beautiful French queen Marie Antoinette. Of course the hairstyle and the pose it was it reminded me about her portraits. But here I experimented with background made with Derwent graffiti and pencils. I think that before this page I hadn't touched my graffiti maybe for a year, if not longer. And after this page I started to use them much more frequently, especially for the backgrounds where I need muted 
colors. And I really appreciate how well they were able to dissolve. They never leave any pencil marks. So I really started to appreciate them much more. And then, of course, I tried to mask as many black lines as possible here to get the look of this picture as close to the oil painting, real painting as possible. And I do love the result which I got. Limited amount of colors, almost all of them are pastel apart from her mask, which helps to attract attention to the eyes. Again, I think that you can see it on the screen, but I also love her skin. Very pale, very appropriate for the French queen, but still with shading a little bit of blush on her cheeks. So everything here I really love and I'm proud of myself. And it's not a very frequent thing. Next, again, we will be looking at the books, at the book by Hanna Carson. And here I selected two pictures. The first one was this gorgeous beetle, which I did this spring, I believe. Here again, you can see that I used mixed media for the background. It's fantasy looking and it's a mix of textures, exactly like I love to do matte background and then to add some shiny elements. And I hope that shining you can see on the screen. And on the beetle I did a lot of golden details, you know that I love to color gold. And I then added the probably aquamarine or emerald parts matching to the color of the wings. I was thinking about jewelry, maybe Tiffany style jewelry when they used a lot of glass together with the gemstones and that's where I got my inspiration. I also added details with a golden watercolor, so everything looks quite festive and shiny. And when I did the background, I also had thoughts that maybe I will ruin it because I mixed many various things here to get that look, but in the end everything worked really well. And such dark background, it really complements the bright look of the beetle. The next one is this picture with bottles. Here I did a watercolor background and I think that it was my first successful time to, to do even wooden texture with a watercolor. Yeah, of course I added a little bit of additional contrast and texture with pencils on top of it, but still mostly I used watercolor. Then I did bottles and it was quite fun to invent what kind of portion will be inside of each of the bottles. Sometimes we had some hints because of the names of the bottles and sometimes I tried to invent them myself. I also think that they look shiny, so they even uh, provide some kind of halo around them. I tried to add those color accents around the bottles on the wooden surface. So this picture is definitely in my top list. Next one will be in the Game of Thrones. I don't know how to count them as one or as two pictures because they are absolutely similar in technique. I'm talking about a pair of Sansa and Sir Loras. I did a watercolor underpaint first, like I usually do in this book, and then I worked with pencils. I do love both of them. Maybe Sansa was a little bit more complicated because here we have a lesser amount of colors, so I really tried to stay in all those gray and blue colors. I used various shades of blue. Even her coat is in her family blue colors and of course a lot of blue for the shadows on the snow. And Fur also was a little bit more challenging comparing to the next picture. But you know that when you put more uh, efforts into coloring, then the final result is more dear for you. So maybe I love Sansa a little bit more comparing to Sir Loras. 
I postponed to color this page, which I loved from the beginning when I got this book, until I, I was completely sure in my skills in doing nice gold, nice uh, metal surface. So now I'm quite proud of his armor. I think that metal details look quite good. I deliberately tried to limit amount of colors used for the flowers. They mostly are pink, light purple, a little bit of blue. So the figure of the knight won't be... So everything won't distract attention from the Sir Loras, from the ornament on his coat. And I think that I put everything I knew about coloring metal and gold into this page. Here watercolor I used only on the sky and a little bit on the flags because I, I simply was too lazy to color them with pencils. And the rest I did with pencils. Again, I am glad that with this pair of portraits I returned to the Game of Thrones. I don't think that I touched it previous year, so return was quite quite happy and quite successful, in my opinion. Next, we will move to the page which I did quite early in this year, maybe even during January or February, so I always try to remember when I did pictures, but I had to check my Instagram whether it was work for this year or for the previous year. It's a book by Ravin Filan. Soon I will show you in my annual review of my book's collection. And in this book I try to color mostly with watercolors. To do animals with watercolors is very challenging for me. I think that I mastered not so badly how to do animals with pencils, but with watercolor it's totally different thing. I did couple of more or less successful portraits of animals and birds here, but my favorite is the lizard, this one. And again, it was because I used various media to get such a result. For the lizard, for her bright color, I used Derwent ink tens and it also helped me to move forward from using Derwent Ink Tense only for the more childish pictures in Lizzie Mary Collins' book to opening the more artistry side that indeed I started to feel better all what they are capable for. This big picture really helped me to understand that I can use them also in this book and I intend to do it. And to make good contrast with the background to the color of the lizard, I used watercolor, but background is quite huge, so I didn't think that to use just one color it will be nice for the final look of the page. So the background is dark, but it still has some interesting texture. I tried to add various dark colors, a little bit more bluish, more greenish, so basic is dark gray, almost black, but with an, some additional color accents. And on some of the areas I even added perlescent watercolor, so some of the elements here are even shiny. I thought that by adding the same turquoise blue as I used a little bit on the body, it will help to make connection between the animal and the background. So I think that this idea really worked, especially when I added a little bit of warm colors on the stone which is closest to us. So I am quite proud how I did this page and how I selected pencils and various watercolors for this. It really helped me to feel much more confident that I will be able to do more interesting pictures here. It's definitely the book which I regret that I abandoned during last months and I plan to return to it as soon as possible. Next, of course, I had to include some books by Teresa Goodrich. You know what, I color a lot in Teresa Goodrich books and fortunately I never have problems in 
selecting colors for her pictures. So maybe I start to appreciate them less because I put into them lesser effort. I think that I can sleep and I still can color in Teresa's books. And for many other books I have to concentrate much, much stronger. I am happy that I don't have to struggle with these books, but somehow, as I said, they are least precious for me, probably. But still, some of the pictures I really, I really love. Picture which I selected here, it's with the cooking in the kitchen. I think that I selected it because it was quite fun to do all those different textures. I do love composition here. I somehow really fall in love with the flower box with various herbs for the kitchen. Here we have wood, here we have steel, and it was quite interesting trying to color steel and trying to calculate all the color reflections which we have to he have here because I have the blender here in red color. I tried to show reflection of this red into the surface of the steel and the same goes for this one and here I have brown reflections. Then I tried to do terracotta pots here and of course the glass stand for the cake. Probably it was the most challenging part. In the beginning I didn't like color of the tablecloth which I selected but I think that now I do love it. It's um, relatively pastel muted green color which definitely doesn't distract attention from the interesting things which we have here. Oh, I remember that it also was challenging how to do milk and oil, so they were recognizable. So in the end I also was quite proud of myself when I managed to finish all the elements here. That was Home Sweet Home. And next will be Manoid Debonair. In Manoid I selected page which I did this fall and it's with bunnies which I tried to restore. It was such a fun to color all those uh, fruits, vegetables, to invent what they have inside of the basket, baskets and jars here. So I really enjoyed it. I think that I do love the color which I selected for the wall. It helped to create quite a warm, nice atmosphere. A lot of fall colors here. And I'm glad that in the end, even if I had some doubts, I selected a red color for the bunny's dress. Now the mother bunny and her family, they stand against the background nicely and the blackberry gem also helped to attract attention to the bunny. It's a unique color on this page, I hadn't used it. So blackberry gem definitely helps to make the bunny the focal point. I colored a lot in Romantic Country, but my choice of best page was quite obvious and I selected the Town Market spread. This one. I did it in the end of the summer and I think that it's definitely one of my best pictures. Again, when you have such a detailed background, you have to be quite careful and from the very beginning to think which elements you want to do the focal points, the most important parts, how to limit amount of colors you use. For me, I used the bright umbrellas with their golden yellow color as the three indications of the three parts of the market. Then I think that intense uh, Vine red on the tablecloth here also helped to attract attention to the girl and to the yummy things here. I started to do it on my birthday, so that's why the happy birthday cake was important for me at the moment. And then I gradually moved from the left side to the central part, to the book stand and then to the vegetable part. I think that when I finished it everything looks like a whole page, nothing is out of palette, so I am quite proud that I managed to do it without big 
challenges, big problems. I had some small doubts regarding this color for the flower vases. I did them blue because I didn't want to lose them on the motley uh, street which I did behind and on the pavement and to correspond with the blue colors which I used in some other areas. I think that it made a nice connection. Everything else I absolutely love. And finally, I decided to include in this top list one of my recent pictures because of course now everything we can think of is a Christmas spirit, so I had to include one of the recently finished Christmas pictures and it was this gift wrapping. It's from Enchanted Christmas. I finished it several days ago and I think that for such a detailed page I managed to set nice accents. And what is slightly more important like Christmas tree, which is slightly less important like this hanging um, Christmas tree ornaments. So I think that it's definitely one of the nicest Christmas works which I managed to do. But maybe I will manage to finish something even better until the end of the year. Anyway, that was my list of best pictures. Of course, the choice was quite difficult because I do love all my pictures, so I had to scroll several times through all my finished works for this year. If you have some other choices among my works, I will appreciate to hear your thoughts. And thank you! In a couple of days I will resume filming the whole video about my remaining books in my collection. Thank you and until the next videos!